And now, a story you will see only on Nightcast. Tomorrow marks one year since an eight-year-old girl from Sherburne County was beaten, starved, and murdered by her father and stepmother. Ever since then, Five Investigates has been digging into what happened to Autumn Hollow. Tonight, investigative reporter Eric Rasmussen is here with newly obtained documents and recordings. And Eric, you found authorities knew about allegations of abuse in that household more than a year before Autumn was killed. Kevin, the timeline we've constructed from police reports, interviews, and other evidence is now at the heart of a $30 million federal lawsuit. It names dozens of mandated reporters, including child protection workers and police officers, each accused of negligence and failing to intervene. First, though, a warning tonight that some of what you're about to see and hear is disturbing. The bottom line is Autumn needs justice. The final days and weeks of her life were torture. The screams of a child so loud, neighbors repeatedly called police. I just kept thinking, that can't be right. That can't be right. That can't be right. But long before eight-year-old Autumn Hollow died, starving and beaten in a bathroom at this apartment complex in Elk River last year, before her father and stepmother admitted to her murder, her nine-year-old brother sounded the first alarm. Do you feel safe at? What? No? Why do you say no? With his mother's permission, five investigates obtained the audio of this interview with Sherburne County Child Protection in February of 2020, six months before Autumn was killed. I have to sleep on the floor with no pillow and blanket, or I get broken my mouth. The red flags also black and blue. He had bruises from his forehead down to his feet. Kelsey Cruz says she took her son, Autumn's older brother, to the emergency room in September 2019 after he came home from a weekend with his father and stepmother, Brett and Sarah Hollow. This medical report shows doctors made a referral to child protection after Cruz documented multiple bruises all over the eight-year-old's body. Was there any doubt in your mind what had happened when you took him into the hospital? No. No, they were everywhere. Less than two months later, an Elk River detective wrote, I was unable to substantiate any sort of abuse allegations against Sarah or Brett. And said that, you know, they were all accidental or from kids at school or from the playground and that it was closed. There's so many things that could have been done that should have been done. There were so many opportunities. Lawyers Carrie Locke and Rich Hector now represent Kelsey Cruz in a federal civil rights lawsuit filed against Sherburne County Child Protection and Elk River Police. Those agencies accused of putting Autumn at significant risk of serious and immediate harm by allowing Brett and Sarah Hollow to keep her for the last six months of her life. Kelsey had a right to access her daughter. As five investigates first reported last year, the Hollows blocked Cruz from seeing Autumn despite a 50-50 custody agreement and dozens of calls to police. The police reports reveal that so many of the wellness checks were cleared without laying eyes on Autumn. Including at least three nights last year. <laughs> Neighbors called police several times, concerned about screaming from the Hollow's apartment. I just hear screaming. One says she shared these recordings with police, including this one recorded just three days before Autumn was killed. But police reports show those child welfare checks were repeatedly cleared with no contact because no one answered the door. It's not often easy to actually get in the door, um, but most police departments, in my experience, have the ability to kind of get in the door. Rich Gehrman is the executive director of the nonprofit Safe Passage for Children of Minnesota. We first spoke with him about Autumn Hollow's case last year. It just struck me that everybody did what they were supposed to do, uh, and the child still died. But after we obtained more evidence, including those medical reports, photos, and interviews, he now questions whether police and child protection did enough. I think you've dug out some more facts which raise more concerns that action could have been taken sooner and could have been taken more aggressively. Autumn's death is the predictable result of failing to intervene when there are 30 plus reports from so many different people. Family members, doctors and neighbors using the words eight year old Autumn did not have or was afraid to speak in this last interview with Sherburne County. Who would you talk to if you had any worries? Mm -hmm. Any 
everybody. Just thinking about hearing her voice. Autumn's mom, Kelsey, still seeking justice and changes to a system that did not protect her daughter. That would help get justice for her too, is, is making it so that other kids don't have to go through the same thing because they do every single day this happens to kids. Elk River and Sherburne County have both declined our repeated requests for an interview, and it could be some time before we learn the outcome of the civil lawsuit against them. That case won't come up again in federal court until October. Both sides are waiting for Brett and Sarah Hollow to be sentenced for Autumn's murder, and that hearing, Kevin, is scheduled for late next month. Eric, any idea how the federal lawsuit might play out based on past cases? Kevin, there is some precedent. And the experts I've spoken to in this particular area of the law tell me it's not especially favorable for Autumn's mother, despite what her lawyers call a mountain of evidence that they say police and the county failed to intervene. Past rulings have actually held that public agencies and their employees cannot be held liable, especially when they're not directly responsible for the care of the child like they would be, for example, if she were in foster care. Of course, the lawyers who filed this lawsuit insist this case is different, and Kevin, they say they're ready for a fight. Eric Rasmussen reporting. We'll be right back.